Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I want to tell the tale of one of the unsung heroes of the Halo universe. An AI responsible almost single-handedly for preventing the entire consumption of the galaxy by the Flood, and that won the most critical battle in history against a parasite while being outnumbered 436 to 1. This is the story of offensive bias. In the final years of the Foreigner Flood War, the fate of the galaxy was practically sealed. The Foreigners had suffered blow after blow for thousands of years, slowly being worn down in number, with each loss only making the Flood stronger. Potentially, millions of planets had been consumed, and as such, the collective knowledge of the Flood was astronomical. Over time, whole sections of the galaxy fell to the Flood, creating extremely biohazardous zones known as burns, galactic regions infected in their entirety. However, the Foreigners had prepared for their return. After their first encounter with the Flood some 1,000 years prior, an extremely powerful Foreigner by the name of Faber had created Mendicant Bias to prepare for their eventual return. In creating Mendicant, a new, hyper-intelligent class of AI was born, the Contender class. Being the first of this new class, Mendicant was without a doubt the most advanced intelligence in the entire history of the Foreigners. Contenders differ from regular AIs in that they're comprised of multiple AI minds that work in tandem with one another. As such, they can have multiple bodies and can multitask like nothing else. Because of Mendicant's hyperintelligence, it was trusted with the entire foreigner military, ordered to command fleets of ships and prepare the Halos and also other defences across the galaxy for impending Flood assaults. It was also ordered to study the Flood, to learn their weaknesses and to understand how best to exploit them. But it was this task that would pave the way to ruin. Fifty years following its creation, Mendicant conducted a test firing of Omega Halo, which inadvertently freed an ancient captive from its prison. A dark being, discovered by the ancient humans on the very edge of the galaxy. They called it the Timeless One, but the Foreigners called it the Primordial, an ancient, twisted hybrid of the Precursors and the Gravemind. Now that it was free from its prison, it was very quickly transported to Installation 07 by the Foreigners, and Mendicant was ordered to interrogate it. And it was during this 43-year-long interrogation where the Foreigners would suffer their biggest loss of the entire war. The Primordial managed to convince Mendicant Bias that its creators were denying the next step of evolution, the Flood. Using its authority as the final precursor, it persuaded Mendicant to abandon its makers and join the Flood via use of the Logic Plague, causing it to go rampant and betray its former masters. This was a cataclysmic turning point in the war. The entity with control of all the Foreigners' defences, including the Halos, had defected to the Flood, taking with it all the abilities it was granted to defend an empire, but now harbouring a deep hatred for its former allies. As you'd expect, this heavily catalyzed the Foreigners' demise. However, in an attempt to push back against this loss, a new contender class AI was created to act as its replacement, Offensive Bias. At the time, Offensive was presumed to be one of, if not the only other contender class AI in existence. It was considered a direct replacement of Mendicant Bias that was created to not only protect the last remnants of the Foreigner Empire, but to directly counter its predecessor. As such, it was designed to be far more operationally lethal. It was ordered to command all of the remaining foreigner defences, the job once held by Mendicant, and when Mendicant found out about Offensive, it looked down upon it in an almost sneering manner, declaring it an inferior metarch, a belief that it would ultimately regret. The final years of the war were nothing but flood victory after flood victory. Every major skirmish ended in a decisive victory for the Parasite, causing their numbers to exponentially grow, while the Foreigners continued to lose everything – troops, sentinels, and fleet after fleet of ships. As they lost in number, they also lost in territory. Their once expansive control of the Milky Way, filled with thousands of crucial locations, had been withered down to merely two. These final two uninfected locations would be the stages for the concluding battles of the war, with the first being the Greater Ark, a larger version of the Lesser Ark from Halo 3. 
The Battle of the Greater Arc was yet another resounding victory for the Flirt. They came with a force of well over a million infected ships commanded by Mendicant Bias and multiple Grave Mines and Key Mines, along with Precursor Star Roads, these gigantic Precursor megastructures that could be used to an absolutely devastating effect. To defend the Greater Arc, which was acting as the final refuge of the entire foreigner civilian population, Offensive Bias had infinitely fewer ships, the Greater Arc's defences, and Omega Halo. And that was it. The conflict went just about as you'd expect. The Flood very, very quickly overwhelmed all foreigner defences and used the Star Roads to literally shatter the Greater Arc into pieces. Offensive resorted to firing Omega Halo, which definitely put a dent in the Flood's forces, but definitely not a big enough dent. Ultimately, Offensive's defensive fleet was almost totally destroyed, with the remaining few ships trapped. However, in a display of its superior intellect, it managed to escape the trap and ensure that the Isodidact survived, and under his new orders, they all fell back to the final bastion of the Foreigner Empire, where they'd ensure this war came to an end, the Lesser Ark. As the Isodidact and few remaining foreigners hurried to the Ark's control room to begin the activation of the Halos, Offensive Bias gathered all the remaining uninfected ships in existence and took them to the Maginot Line, a defensive perimeter of foreigner installations built long ago to defend the core worlds of the foreigners' empire from invading ships. However, just like the Maginot Line that we know in the real world, it didn't work as intended. With this final fleet, Offensive waited for Mendicant and its Flood Army's final arrival. Its goal was not to win the battle, that was pretty much mathematically impossible, but instead to hold off the Flood long enough for the Isodidact to activate the Halo Array on the Ark, and when Mendicant's fleet showed up, it was clear that this was a battle he wasn't going to win. Offensive's roughly 11,000 strong fleet was matched by Mendicant's 4,802,019 ships. Offensive was outnumbered 436 to 1. The battle begun with Mendicant sending in roughly 1.8 million flood-controlled non-combat ships towards Offensive's fleet. It retaliated, but it had nowhere near enough weapons to stop them all, and ultimately, some made it past its defences and boarded the uninfected ships. However, Mendicant's choice to not send in any warships exposed its rage as an exploitable weakness to Offensive. After sending a total of seven waves of infected non-lethal ships towards Offensive, it realised that Mendicant was simply getting too cocky, sending some of its ships elsewhere. To Mendicant, this seemed like it was gaining a tactical advantage over Offensive, but it had no idea that it was simply stalling to allow the Halos to be activated. It had no idea that Offensive had no intentions of winning this battle, but merely holding Mendicant off long enough. Mendicant continued to blindly assault the defensive fleet, almost tunnel visioning on it, because as far as it knew, destroying these ships meant that it would finally win the war. Its blind rage and eagerness to punish its creators, along with its constant downplaying of offensive bias, caused it to get cocky. And then, suddenly, the Halos activated, killing every single biological flood and non-flood on board both side ships. With Mendicant Bias seemingly shocked, Offensive activated self-destruction in its ships that had been captured by the flood, destroying much of Mendicant's fleet, and it used dreadnoughts like battering rams, crushing what were once flood vessels. Eventually, after continuously outsmarting it, Offensive outnumbered Mendicant 6 to 1. Despite its attempt to flee, Mendicant was captured and delivered to the Ark, where it would stand trial for its crimes against the Foreign Empire. Ultimately, the Isodidact chose to keep it alive, given its extensive knowledge of the Flood that would prove useful to future civilizations should the Parasite ever return. Mendicant was then locked into exile and entombed beneath a vast desert on the Ark, forced to only think about one thing, atonement. What happened to Offensive Bias after its incredible victory and also the trial is honestly unknown. For all we know, it could have been decommissioned, or just like Mendicant Bias, it could still be out there somewhere.
And that is the story of arguably the biggest unsung hero in the entire Halo universe. You know, if it weren't for offensive bias, we would definitely all be speaking Gravemind now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tale. If you did, then please don't forget to show your support down below with the likes and the comments, and of course, if you're new around here, then by subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the very near future. And so, I want to give a huge thank you to Nick Goodman along with everybody else for the crazy support over on Patreon. And thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one.